And now your host, real estate broker, consultant, and best-selling author, Todd Tremonti. What is up, party people? What is up? Special guest co-host in studio today, the one and only Mrs. Tremonti. Hello. Good morning. Good Dana afternoon. Tremonti, <laughs> CPA, mom, wife, general all-around ninja in yeah. studio, ready to talk residential real estate with you. Listen, she's been here with me from the start, folks. She's seen all the mistakes and all the messes and gets to be a part of all the impact. So That's true. if you've got questions, 214-310-0008, talking about the summer selling market. And that may be the most stereotypically realtor thing I say all year, summer selling market. We'll get into it, folks. We'll talk about the state of the market. We will absolutely cover your questions. If you don't want to call or text 214-310-0008, she's going to love this, y'all. <laughs> you know what to do, just like my son says. Touchermoneyteam.com. Yeah, that's my favorite. That's her boy. That's her boy. Tatramontyteam.com. All day, every day, all night, every night. Tatramontyteam.com. You can find out what your home would sell for right now. You can find out what your home equity looks like. You can find out the uh, market value trajectory of your home. And if you really want, you can find out what we would list and sell it for or even get a cash offer all of that happens right there. Go to TatramontyTeam.com. Click that home valuation button or the seller button or any other button you like. You can search any home for sale by any company in all of DFW. TatramontyTeam.com. Now, let's get right into it. What the heck is happening in Dallas-Fort Worth residential real estate right now? I'll tell you. The headlines still say that year over year, the market is down. The headlines are absurd. You sit on a throne of lies. We're going to use all the drops today because Dana's here. <laughs> um, here's the thing. Year over year numbers are crazy. And we've talked about this many, many times. If the month of February has two weeks where it rains a lot, this February's numbers are going to be way down over last February's numbers. And no one's going to tell you that. They're just going to say that the numbers are down. And they're going to say whatever they want to say to get you to read the headline, click the link, do the thing. What we are here to do at DFW Real Estate Weekly is to tell you what will serve you, what will help you enjoy your home more, buy smarter, sell safer, and literally enjoy and protect your home as much as you can. And so what's really happening right now is there's an absolute excitement about residential real estate that we haven't seen in about 15 months. So when the word came out early 2022 that rates were definitely gonna go up to combat inflation, we begin to see total overall activity in the market dip. And then late 2022, we saw prices start to wobble a little bit. And then early 2023, the wobbliness in prices kind of was flat. So it just felt like someone had hit pause. We didn't see a lot of price drops, but we see, saw a lot of activity drop. And then March, we started to see some of that activity come back like we normally do in spring and summer. Rates bumped a little bit. And then just in the last couple of weeks, rates bumped again. But here's the thing nobody changed their behavior. And that's, you know, nobody's probably an exaggeration, but we, we noticed almost no change in market activity. There's a general optimism from buyers right now. Now, obviously buyers aren't thrilled about interest rates, but there's a general optimism from buyers right now and sellers are getting back to it. Sellers are getting those homes back on the market. We're seeing inventory. It's not really going up, but it's maintaining. As the pace of buying is going up, inventory is going up enough with it that we're seeing our uh, number of homes on the market, what we call inventory number, staying pretty steady. Obviously, DFW is a huge area. Different submarkets are acting a little bit differently, but take markets like Alito or Benbrook or Allen or Richardson, and we're seeing some pretty decent steadiness. We are still in a seller's market. Sellers have the leverage, but it's a better time to buy than we've seen in quite a while because of that kind of plateauing of pricing and activity. We'll dig into a lot more of those details, but as you know, the first segment of our show was always brought to you by Patrick Glaros and his mortgage team over at Cardinal Financial. Dana, what? Uh, how many mortgage lenders have we used since we've been married? Uh, about one. About one, yeah. somewhere in the range of one, precisely one, and who was that person? Um, Patrick, he's awesome. And when we need mortgage help, how do we get a hold of him? Uh, 
call him. We just call or, or text him, yeah, right? We don't text. act like he's some hard to reach big bank and go through a portal on the website, although you can go to patrickglaros.com, G L A R O S, patrickglaros.com. We call or text him, and you can do the exact same thing. You can treat him the same way we do, like a personal friend who will slow down the process to ask you questions, understand your needs, consider your long-term wealth building and property protecting goals and do the right thing for you. 972-728-3420, 972-728-3420, or just go online to patrickglaros.com. That's G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickglaros.com, NMLS number 308804. But Patrick and his team operate like we operate here at the Tatramani Home Selling Team. They're a unique group of people who specialize in each of their individual roles on the team using their God-given gifts and abilities to care for their clients. They're not pounding out 5,000 loans a year like some big giant bank with a one-size-fits-all model. They're helping you think through what would be best, absolute lowest rate, or would you like to protect the most cash you possibly can? Are you most thinking about your payment? Are you thinking about the cash you have to bring to closing? And a thousand other variables and a bunch of different options. PatrickGlaros.com is where you should go for all your mortgage needs. And it's where you should go if you're thinking about an investment, your personal home, a vacation home, a rental, patrickglaros.com. All right, here's the deal. I promised a deeper dive on the state of the market, but I know you're excited about the big butt segment. Before we do that, Classy Courtney, Triple C, did we get any Did we get any audience participation? Did we get any voting last week? Because- well, it goes up today. The okay. voting. So the voting goes up today. We need you to vote. Find us on social media somewhere. Just look up Todd Tremonti or Todd Tremonti Realtors. You'll find us pretty much everywhere. Listen, folks, I don't know how comfortable I am with it, but Courtney's even got me on TikTok these days. I don't know what's <laughs> He's happening. He's doing great. I don't know what's happening over there, but apparently we're a big deal. Handfuls of people, and I mean one handful, handful. of people <laughs> are really <laughs> We got a couple thou yesterday. A couple thou okay. thou. I've never even been on TikTok. Oh. Does that show what? how old I am? I haven't no. either. Okay. No. Yeah. Todd's on it and he's never been. Yeah, I'm okay. a real big deal over there. I'm quite an influencer. <laughs> yeah, Probably are. spelled wrong though, like with an S. Oh. All right. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I know you really enjoy the big butt segment. We don't have a nickname for you yet. Big People butt. vote of vote on Courtney's nickname. Find us on social media. You can say my vote. You can just drop a word. You can talk a little smack. Keep it clean, PG. But we're talking. Classy Courtney, we're talking peanut is an option. We've got triple C. Full price. Full price Courtney, which I think is <laughs> I not like wise. Uh-huh. Court. <laughs> she loves she loves a quality full price product, y'all. Uh, court, I don't feel comfortable with. That feels like something uh, that, you know, it, it's more of a personal, you know, dating relationship type deal. But um, listen, create your own adventure is an option. Create your own adventure. Make something up. Let us know where we aired. Give us a better idea. But for now... I'm simply going to refer to you as Courtney. What uh, what do you want to do with this big butt segment? Okay, well, so the feds raised rates again. Yay. But. But. All right, people are freaking out about rates. They've been freaking, about, freaking out about rates. There's nothing new there. The headlines will tell you that now is not a great time to buy a home because rates have gone up yet again. But here's what's really happening. The Fed rate has gone up. When the Fed rate goes up, down, or does nothing, that does not necessarily directly correlate to mortgage lending rates. And what we're seeing right now is that mortgage rates have not freaked out a whole lot for our typical buyer borrowers. And the the market is doing what I just said a little bit ago in, in kind of the market report, is still responding fairly optimistically to this market. Now, we've talked about this for almost a year now, as we've seen mortgage rates creep up, stay a little bit flat and not dip a whole lot. And that is that last year, about 15 months ago, you could get a lot lower rate, but you were also gonna probably pay 40, 50, 60, 70, maybe $100,000 over asking, uh, and probably more than you actually thought that home was worth in order to get into it. So let me ask you, Dana, as a CPA, a quick mathematical question. Would you like to pay $200 more per month for say, maybe two years until rates get a little bit better, probably. No guarantees, but probably. Or $70,000 more for a house at the time of purchase because of the level of competition. Which one of those do you think mathematically would go better for you? 
I think I'd go with the 200. Okay, she's got a master's degree, people, and she would say that, look, a higher monthly payment is not fun, and it doesn't mean everyone can actually right, pay that right. payment. We understand that. That is not awesome if you literally just can't make the payment. But if you can't make the payment of $200 more per month-ish, you probably couldn't have paid seventy dollars or $80,000 more than the home was worth that month. So in both scenarios, you either need to save some money or buy a lower priced home. Right. And, and we're thrilled to help advise you and help you make the right choice on either one of those things. If it's not the time for you to buy, that's okay. Um, we don't always get what we want when we want. We've been there as a family and as a couple before as well. Um, but we understand that. But here's the thing. Those rates bumping from the Fed don't necessarily mean that mortgage rates have gone up. For some people, some places they have, but that has not created a major pullback in the home buying market here in Dallas-Fort Worth. We saw almost no noticeable change with that Fed rate increase. The other thing that came out of the Fed rate increase is the chairman of the Fed, Chairman Powell, said, well, they would say indicated. He didn't say definitively that this is probably the end of rate increases for a while. So even though the Fed rate bumped, and the Fed rate is like the rate that banks lend to each other with. That's an oversimplification, but that's what it is. Um, basically, hey, we're going to make one more small quarter point bump, and that's probably going to be it for a while. That's how everybody interpreted what he said. That second part was better news than the first part was bad news. Does that make sense? The second part was more positive than the first part was negative. And for that reason, most people responded pretty favorably to it. And people are now more confident than ever. If I buy now, the market's probably going to stay the same or get better. And we're a lot closer to rates maybe coming down again in a year or two, or depending on politics, maybe a little bit sooner. So there's the big butt segment for you. Rates did go up, but it really didn't negatively impact our market at all. And the fact that rates went up a little bit with the message that they're probably not going up anymore soon actually drove a lot of optimism and positivity into the residential real estate markets everywhere, especially DFW, who was already outperforming most of the country anyway. So there you go. Appreciate your uh, Thank you, uh, initiation of the big butt segment. Uh, full price, Courtney. In the absence of Ian, I think you're just killing it. I mean... <laughs> Dana's really here to hold down the hard work, but I'm doing it all over here. Really? What do we want to do next, ladies? I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to tell you that at this very moment, PMR roofing is on top of my house, putting on a brand new roof. I just and drove by there actually. You checked on it. Yeah, it's going. It's not finished yet. Not so finished, they're still working on it. But, um, if you need a new roof, that's exactly who should be on top of your house as well. These are high quality people that have put, been putting roofs on residential and commercial for years and years and years that will look you in the eye, shake your hand, tell you what you need or you don't need, and you can trust them. They'll be here before the hailstorm and after the hailstorm. They're not flying through town just picking up easy work, uh, and they will not oversell you. You can trust what they say, and they'll do it at a fair price. And you just can't ask any more than that from a roofing company. PMRroofing.com. they got a great website that's super actually helpful for a, for a trades company like a roofer. Uh, call our buddy Jordan, 214-957-0839. And if you ever forget any of the pros and vendors that we talk to here on the show, just go to TatramoneyTeam.com, click that radio tab, and you can find all the phone numbers and email addresses and websites that you need. Todd, we have such a fun summer planned. Oh, my gosh. So many fun things. Tell everybody what's happening with the PB&J Drive and our summer fun guide Give everybody the scoop. I will do that. Thank you so much for such an energetic prompt there, Full Price Courtney. Okay, here's the deal. This summer should not just be a hot, miserable, hunker down in your house and wait it out type situation. Um, first of all, in the month of June, y'all know I get angry every year in June. I get ticked off at Dallas-Fort Worth every June. And the reason is there's a bunch of kids that are getting fed breakfast and lunch at their school. I do not care about your politics about that. I don't care who you're blaming for that. There are children in our city where we have 80 story buildings and professional sports teams and you can go out to dinner and everything costs $50 now. And there are kids that aren't eating. So I am telling you, I am asking you to be the person that helps feed hungry kids and hungry elderly people and hungry people that are busting their tail and they're just not able to make ends meet right now. But whoever you need to focus on, 
We're going to partner with the North Texas Food Bank, the Tarrant Area Food Bank, many of our media partners and radio and other places, and we're going to feed those kids, okay? So PBJ Drive will run the entire month of June. If you're eager to do something about it right now, you can Venmo 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 20 bucks, 50 bucks. Right now, you can Venmo to at PBJ Drive, at PBJ Drive. You can go to pbjdrive.com. That website's probably not fully updated yet because we're onboarding some of our partners right now. But throughout the month of June, the food banks have the most demand and the least contributions. So they're able to meet the need, but then by the end of June, the shelves are almost empty. So we are going to meet that need. You are going to help us because I know you don't want kids in our market to starve either. And we're going to go fill those shelves. We're going to give them cash so they can get the things they need. And we're going to give them peanut butter and jelly because they have told us peanut butter and jelly has a long shelf life and it can provide a lot of meals and decent basic nutrition. So PBJ drives coming up in June and then a ton more positive fun stuff. It is fun to feed kids. There's not a lot more fun to do than be purposeful in your life, but we have a summer fun guide that our team, Courtney and Robert and others have put a lot of work into to show you how to beat the heat, find the sneaky water parks, find the best burgers, the best ice cream, fun stuff to do at home when you can't get out. This is for moms and dads and grandparents and kiddos and people that are looking to not constantly hear the words that kids say all summer, which is, I'm so bored. I'm so bored. What am I supposed to do? Get creative, develop your brain. Don't sit there and tell me that all day. Anyway, we are going to help you with that. We've got a 20 something page summer fun guide with some summer long challenges and some suggestions and some ideas, some day trips. Some day trips. Ooh. Ooh, some day trips. Tell me if you were just to come up with like a word or a phrase about a great day trip, what might you say about that? I mean, Courtney? we're going for all the best days. You're like yeah! the ex expert over here. Let's hear it. If only Courtney had an entire, you oh. know, brand built around this it's where true. you could do this. I do love to travel, guys. All the best days.com will have all your best uh itineraries for different cities and different areas. And we're featuring Wimberley and Glen Rose and a day in Dallas in okay. this guy. So what does that actually mean? Well, you got to get a summer fun guy. You but do. what it is, is it's Courtney who loves this stuff. She has a passion for it. She has a business where you want to go to Maui. Don't go to Maui until you get her guide. And the guide tells you, here's where you get coffee. Here's where you hang out. Here's the best place to go sightseeing. And so you don't have to do all that thing. Dana, how much do you like planning trips? I hate it, actually. Does it make you excited and optimistic about spending time with your family? Uh, no, it's my least favorite Does it make part. you a little bit bitter and angry yes. about the vacation? Okay, cool. So if you're a mom, this is who Courtney loves. This is who Courtney's serving yes. with Thank this you. business, with this Love project, you. is moms who are doing all the things, but also want to get out of the environment where all the things are staring at you all the time and just get on the road and go and have fun. Courtney's made it really cool where you can do this very affordably, jump in the car, go get some coffee, get some food, see some sights, have some activities, be a fun mom. It's not just for moms, but that's, she knows that's a big need. And in this guide, she has given to you for free. Normally you pay a very reasonable fee to get the guide for Maui or all these other places, Colorado, cities in Colorado and stuff like that. But she's given you three of them all within a reasonable drive from Dallas to go and have a really great day for a staycation or short drive road trip. That's just one of the things in just our summer one of Monday. the things in the guide. So here's what you do. If you would like a copy of our glossy print, not cheap to make and print summer fun guide, go to toddtramontyteam.com or, you know, like my son says, toddtramontyteam.com. And all you do is click the contact button at the top right and then just fill out that contact form and in the message part, just say, I would love a summer fun guide and then we need all your information. We need your physical address so we can mail it to you. We need your phone number and your email just in case we need to like clarify something or make sure that, you know, if you would like a couple of them or whatever. So go to toddtramontyteam.com, click contact. There's no special form for this. Just click contact. And in the little contact form, just say, I would love a summer fun guide and we'll hook you up. I wanna tell you about Keen Landscaping really quickly and then we're gonna dive back into the real estate stuffs. Uh, Keen Landscaping has also been at our house in the last couple of weeks doing a little bit of warranty work and some new planting of, I don't know, 30 a lot. Eastern Red Cedars and Nellie R. Stevens Hollies. 
because uh, we are trying to build some natural privacy around our home. We, because we have a larger lot, we've got extra neighbors and we love them, but they all have different fences. And so we can't have consistent fence looks. So we're planting a bunch of large evergreen shrubs and Keen's been a partner for us uh, to help tell us what we need to plant and when and where and come get all that done. Design and consultation, landscaping, construction, landscaping, maintenance, retaining walls, irrigations, plus they've got a tree service. Just go to keenlandscaping.com, K-E-A-N-E, keenlandscaping.com. Ask for Ben, tell him Todd Tremonti or Dana Tremonti sent you. It's, you know, she's kind of a big deal. Y'all. I, I don't know. know if you know this. Todd, we have a new segment. Yeah. Uh-oh. We haven't had it in a long time, I don't think. You've done it on the YouTube channel. It's called the Lightning Rounds. What? Lightning Round. <laughs> lightning Round. Cool. Um, and so <clears throat> I need you to give me an answer in under a minute. Oh, gosh. What do people need to know about Allen, Texas? Well, sadly this week, you need to know that you want to pray for our friends and our family and our neighbors in Allen, Texas, that tragedy struck our town. Um, It is a wonderful place to live. It is a safe place to live with great schools known for football and a high school football stadium that rivals, if not exceeds, most college stadiums and in some ways, some uh, lower level professional stadiums. Uh, Allen is split a bit, east-west, not equal sizes, but Central Expressway 75 uh, splits east and west Allen. You've got a lot of larger builder communities where developers you know, kind of came in and built hundreds, if not thousands of homes. Some of those neighborhoods are thought of as a little bit cookie cutter, but still highly desirable. And others of them are thought of as some really gorgeous custom homes with really great neighborhood features. You've got plenty of restaurants, plenty of retail, access to lots of major highways, and you are close to other communities that people love to be in. Allen, Texas has been a super popular, wonderful place to live for a long, long time. North of Plano, south of McKinney, really well located to take advantage of a lot of the things happening on the north side. All the cool Frisco stuff accessible from Allen, plus you can get down to Dallas in a pretty short commute. Santa's coming to town. That's time. Okay. Oh we're, we're going with the Santa timer today. <laughs> I mean, we got applause over here. I don't know. I, y'all, I'll just mute her. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm not sure what we're supposed to do with her. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home right now and you want that legitimate market update specifically tied to your home where you live, if you're thinking about selling and buying this summer, this is a great summer to do that. Just go to ToddTremontiTeam.com, like my son says. ToddTremontiTeam.com. And we will get you taken care of. You can find out what your home would sell for in under one minute. Just go to ToddTremontiTeam.com, click Home Valuation. You can also go find out if you're ready to buy. There's a Home Buyer Readiness Scorecard at ToddTremontiTeam.com. You can search any home for sale by any real estate company anywhere in DFW, also at ToddTremontiTeam.com. If you're not sure how you feel about us, if we've been a little bit ridiculous on the show today and you'd just like to find out if we are who we say we are, just Google my name, get as close as you can to spelling it right, Todd Tremonti, and you'll see over 700 reviews from people that have bought, sold, and done both with us in the past. We would love to earn your trust if we are a right fit. We have a little bit of a waiting list on the selling side right now, but if you're the right fit for us and we're the right fit for you, we'd love to have a Zoom consultation. Jump on phone and find a time to bring you into the office. We'll buy you a cup of coffee or a Coke or even a fancy bubbly water. And we would love to talk to you about what the right next step for you, your family, and your finances are. But if you want to buy or you want to sell right now and the headlines in your neighbors are scaring you with talk of rates and bad market conditions, Call us. Allow us to help you find some clarity. We'll answer those questions for you. If the decision is to not do anything, that's okay. If the decision is to buy or sell, we would be thrilled to advocate for you with a seven-step proprietary marketing system and a 13-point buyer system where we guarantee to sell your home over the average price and under the average time. We'll be right back, and we'll be talking about how to get ahead as a buyer or seller right now. We are back live in the Keen Landscaping Studios with lots and lots to talk about. We've had a lot of probate questions lately. People asking about what do I do with a property if uh, unfortunately we've had a, a uh, we've lost a family member or a friend or maybe even a neighbor. Uh, we did a deal one time uh, with one of our good friends that that uh, Jerry Reynolds actually the car pro who's got a show here on WBAP as well and. Um, he just had a very, very close neighbor that he was the person uh, designated to help them deal with their real estate or help their estate, their family deal with their real estate. 
um, once they were gone. Uh, we get a lot of questions about this. As a matter of fact, you had a friend call you lately. Yes, that's true. And um, say, what, what did they say? What was the first? She was just, I think what's tricky about probate is until you have to do it, you don't really know anything about it, at least in my opinion. Well, and and it she called just, you know, I need help. What do we do with all of these things? Can your team help yeah. us sell this house that we need to sell quickly? And we did, and it sold this week. We did. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Actually, Jeremy just walked by the studio. He's yeah. the he's the legend that and did, did it. Did a great job. Uh, yeah, and they called bragging about him because that's how Jeremy rolls. Um, here's the thing, folks. Probate doesn't technic well technically it the word the word probate does mean the same thing. No, don't worry, guys. Courtney's got some great <laughs> reels on her phone back there. Um, here's the thing. The word probate basically means, it does mean the same thing for everybody, but it's that legal process where you kind of handle an estate and, and determine ownership of assets and property and things like that. That's not the perfect definition. If our, if our attorney friend Andrew Gore was on, he would have given you a better definition, but that's, that's what's happening. The deal is, depending on the will and the estate and the number of heirs and all those things, this can be a wildly different process. So it is wise, once you know what that legal process is, to reach out to a real estate professional right away. We are often contacted directly by probate attorneys. We have great relationships with a handful of probate attorneys and they'll call us and say, hey, I have a client, this is their situation. Is that something you can help them on? Um, and it's a lot like what your friend called you about saying, here's what's happened in our family. What do we do next, right? Do we do an estate sale and just sell all the furniture and all the jewelry and plates and right. dishes and random things that we don't know if anybody would want. And then how do we sell the home? Do we sell the home? When can we sell the home? Who gets what money and how do we, how does that get passed out and distributed and all that stuff? And there are questions to all of those individual, there are answers to all those individual questions that I probably aren't worth individually going through today. But what is worth going through today is some things you definitely should not do, which is try to handle all that on your own or simply just sit and wait and assume that someone else is going to handle it for you. The in-between is seeking out professionals and experts that have done this many, many times and following their leadership. Obviously, a probate attorney or an estate-specific attorney, hopefully someone you had and planned ahead with that knows how to handle this based on the wishes of the, the deceased family member or whatever the case is. But basically all of us will deal with some level of this throughout our lives. We will hopefully prepare our estates so that our children or our heirs, whoever we want to leave things to, know what's going to happen when we go. And most of us will probably deal with that with a parent or a family member or a grandparent or something like that, where we may be involved either as an heir or as some a trustee or someone involved in the process helping sort all this out. And a lot of people really get overwhelmed by it. Obviously there's emotion and grief involved. Unfortunately, sometimes there's emotion and greed involved and it can get really messy. So number one, seek out wise professionals. Starting, you know, probate attorneys is central to this. If not, someone's gonna be appointed and they're gonna have really not a whole lot of connection to you and the person that wants this done well. Secondly, real estate is usually the biggest decision people are making. It's not typically the car in the garage or the jewelry in the house or whatever. It's the, the, the real estate is usually the most significant asset, asset in most estates. Oftentimes, we get a call from some of the not best attorneys and they want us to sell the home fast because that's the only way they're going to get paid. The only real assets in the estate is equity in a house. And so they're like, can you hurry up and sell this house? I don't even care what you sell it for. I want to make sure I get paid. Sure, you can get paid. Let's get this over with. Obviously, you don't want that to be the way this gets handled if you were a loved one is trying to transfer a property. So all that said plan ahead. If this gets thrust upon you, this is something we do here at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. We can help you get, navigate that, get connected with an attorney that you can trust. We are not attorneys, obviously. We do not specialize in the legal process. But on the real estate side, we try to keep people from making some really bad decisions when it comes to selling a house in a probate scenario. Is it always important to sell it as fast as possible? No. All right. Good Why point. Why not? Um, well, that's a great question, actually. Um, people want to just get it over with because it doesn't feel good, 
right? Because it's sad, because it's hard. And sometimes you live in a different city or state and you're like, I just, you know, I don't need the money or the difference in five or 10,000 isn't worth me flying back and forth and cleaning it out and doing all that. Just get rid of it, right? What we often say to people is, you know, we say this to everyone, go to toddtramoneyteam.com, click on home valuation or the seller tab. You can find out what your home is worth right now. You can get a full price cash offer for your house um, and you can get a bunch of other options too. But a lot of people are like, just, I don't want to mess with it. Just get rid of it quickly. And then they leave 30, 40, 50, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity on the table because they didn't have a plan or because they didn't seek out counsel. So my answer to you is no, selling it as fast as possible sometimes is the right choice, but most of the time it's not. And when people do that, they're typically leaving a ton of money on the table. Now, the other thing people do is they just assume because it's older or outdated or there's a bunch of stuff in it or whatever they assume, I just need to fire sale it, right? I'll just take that cash offer at 40% less of the full market value because that's what you do in these situations. What our team does at the Touch Money Home Selling Team, John and Jeremy both specialize in coming in and blowing people's minds with what we could actually get for that home. And we can help operate and you know, navigate and, and bring in those third-party services to clean it up, throw stuff away, have an estate sale done or whatever. We can't do all that for you, but we can connect you with other vendors uh, and we can help you manage the process a little bit. And then we can typically sell that home for way, way, way more money than you would have ever thought. And honestly, usually it's pretty darn quick anyway. Yeah. The only thing we're waiting on is the court to say, okay, you can go sell it now. And then you don't have to worry about who gets what checks and things. We can help you between the attorney and us deal with, okay, who needs to sign off on this? And then the title company will send everyone their check. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to fight with your siblings and your cousins and things. You know, we can't control all of that. But you don't have to worry that someone is not going to handle that right. We'll have it handled by a third party institution that's legally bound to do it based on what the contract says or what the attorney said. So probate's no fun, but you don't want to let it get worse by letting an asset that a loved one deliberately wanted to leave to you uh, be a burden on your family, a, a, a source of conflict and, and additional sadness and grieving. And by the way, less financially rewarding. Right. Right. So yes, that can be handled that way. Uh, we've got great contacts in the probate attorney world and many, many of them call us because they know we will actually sell that home for more money than other agents. Because as you know, we guarantee to sell homes over the average price and under the average time, any home in any market, as long as we choose to work with each other. And for someone in this situation, you know, dad or granddad, mom or grandmom's got the house. We know it hasn't been updated in forever, but you know, we'd like to get everything we can out of it without having to spend months of our life there. We think it's probably worth, you know, 400 and we come around and say, well, if we do these three things, it's worth 480. And they're going, oh my gosh, I've got one sister and we're splitting that. You're talking about $40,000 more each? Yes. So I've, if you can afford to be a little bit patient yep. and do a little bit of extra work and even not even a, a ton, if you can get connected to people that will help you do it, just yep. a few more extra steps. Handful more phone calls, right? Phone calls, yeah. yeah. Could get you a lot more equity. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, and you brought it up earlier, you, you were talking about is, is the fastest always the best, but that really is more a question about people's emotional state and their decision-making right. ability in the moment, right? Is it just get it out of my life or is it like, okay, this is sad. This is hard, but let me take a deep breath and let someone lead me that I can trust so that they carry the burden of all, a lot of those details and management of process and people and services and dollars and contracts, mm -hmm. maybe even vendors. So you can grieve and you can also make wise choices because oftentimes the emotion, the grief, uh, the anxiety leads to some really poor decisions. Mm -hmm. And then truthfully, the grief or the burden lasts longer in that situation. I mean, we're gonna grieve lost loved ones forever, but you know what I mean? It's worse and you feel worse about the situation because you feel like you didn't steward that resource well that was left to you. And we would love to help you do that or find the right people to do that well. So if you're finding yourself in a probate situation or you're even preparing for a probate situation, we've had clients in the past that wrote us into the will, meaning they said, when I die, I wanna make sure my kids don't fight over this and you're the one that sells it mm -hmm. because I trust you, I've listened to you on the radio, I've read your books, I've met you, I've used you before, whatever. 
And I know you will get the most money in the right amount of time with the right plan. And you will respect my wishes and you'll go to war for me, even if they don't want you to, even if they don't know that that's what's needed. And so we know we're getting our message across when people are telling us that. But if you're preparing for a situation like that or find yourself in a probate situation with real estate involved at any time, just give us a call. 214-310-0008, 214-310-0008, or go to like your son says. Like my son. Tatramoneyteam.com. Tatramoneyteam.com. While you're at tatramoneyteam.com, click that home valuation button. You'll find out what your home would sell for in less than 60 seconds. You can find out uh, what your current level of home equity equity is and the trending value of your home. Is it going up? Is it going down? Was it worth more last year than this year? Or is it worth, worth it, was it worth less? You can click a button and get a full price. You can get an all cash offer if that's what you want right now. You can also find out what our home could list and sell it for. And then you can compare those different numbers and you can come back weekly, monthly, annually, whatever you want and track those numbers as they move. Okay, Todd. Um, okay, Dana. I know you read all the time. <laughs> you digest so much information that um, I, I can't even, I, I, I can't tell y'all how, how many nonfiction <laughs> books that I've recommended have so, you read? And, and I don't even know how you remember all these details, but I know you ingest it all and you remember it and want to teach everyone else about it. So tell us. By the way, she's are- saying that positively. <laughs> just, just. <laughs> You might not like have on, caught it in the tone, but... Every road trip. <clears throat> hey, what do you want to listen to? Um, the radio? No, 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 no. Um, we're always learning around here at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team and the Todd Readers Tremonti are Family. leaders and learners are earners, says so, my boy. <laughs> tell us, what are you bursting at the seams to teach us all today? Okay, I'm going to throw a curveball in here, y'all, because this is not from a book. This is from... That was not the button I meant. Okay. How about, um, never mind. Uh, okay, how, <laughs> Courtney had some water and I was hoping I could uh, get her to eject it, but she didn't. Okay, here's the thing. This is not from a book, but this is from something even more absurd oh, yes. that I did recently. And you know what I'm about okay, to say. Okay. I got on an airplane with a buddy of mine and we flew to Omaha, that's right, Omaha, Nebraska. And we went and sat in a stadium with 25,000 plus people and listen to a 92 and a 99 year old man. Nerd alert. Take Q and A for six and a half hours. <laughs> Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger at the Berkshire Hathaway shareholder event. And he was so excited. They call it the Woodstock of capitalism. <laughs> I'm smiling right now. I did bring home a cool souvenir cup with Warren's face on it. It's about a 40 ounce or it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> Here's the thing. One of my favorite takeaways from that event, ironically, is about estate planning. There was an estate attorney that stood up and asked about an 11 minute question and Warren finally put his hand up and was like, I got it. I got it. Sit down. Hush. Stop talking. The guy was kind of trying to self promote. He was actually from Fort Worth. So sir, if you're listening, don't do that. Here's the thing. The guy was asking basically when you have significant wealth, which Warren Buffett does, he's like, you know, one of the five wealthiest men on the planet. Uh, and Charlie, you know, poor old Charlie's only like number 70 with his 4 billion or whatever. Um, he basically said, how do people get estate planning right? And, you know, Buffett gave him some technical answers about like, um, you know, with this amount of wealth, a lot of people do things differently and there's trusts and there's all these things, but, and then he told a story and I won't tell you the whole story, but I'll tell you the takeaway that I had from the story. He basically said, if you want your children or your heirs to carry on your values, do not wait until you are dead to try to impose them on that on them with a gift of massive wealth. Model that for them with your life. Mm-hmm. And Warren Buffett identifies as an agnostic guy, so he's not a fa- man of faith. He's not a man that's following any any God or any person. I follow Jesus, and if you listen to the show for very long, you know that. And the beautiful thing is, as a Christ follower, as someone who's trying to submit to my own wishes, die to myself, and follow Jesus, what he said lines up perfectly. Sure right. Mm-hmm. So as we see scripture instruct us how to model for our children, you know, write it on the doorpost, live it out daily, walk that out in front of your children. Uh, I loved his answer. And basically what he says is, uh, you know, money will ruin families. Money will ruin children. By the way, hopefully in America, most of us are going to die when our tr- children are no longer 
children. They're still our children, but they're adults. You know, hopefully we all lived at 70, 80, 90 or plus. And so your children are 40, 50, 60 plus, right? And really you're talking about maybe even your grandkids. And his point was, if the goal of your wealth is to provide a great life for people, the best way to do that is to model your values for them while you're alive. And then he tied in some estate planning, like that they know what's going to happen when you die long before you die. Right. They know what you, why you amassed that wealth. And by the way, some of you are like, well, I don't have all that wealth, so I'm checking out. That might be your home, your car, a, a watch that your father gave you. It doesn't have to be billions of dollars like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger have. That was my takeaway from that event. And hopefully that makes you feel good about the fact that I flew there and spent a weekend away. <laughs> all right, folks, that's the perfect. life wisdom from billionaires segment, otherwise known as Todd's takeaways. Okay, but that was a conference for real estate agents. No, yes? it was a conference for nerds and dorks. It was the shareholder event for Berkshire Hathaway, right? So, but 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 I, I want to clarify. I went as a real estate broker and team leader and ministry leader and dad and husband looking for, how do I bridge those worlds, oh, right? right? So right. Pe most people that go there want to be a bazillionaire and want everyone to know how awesome and brilliant they are. Look, I'm not saying I'm not tempted by those things. What I'm saying is I want to know how to pursue building a business and having lots of clients and a radio show and writing books and all these things, but also to do that with purpose and impact where the glory is not mine, it belongs to God. And that's hard to do, right? That's like scripture warns us of that. Logic warns us that it's very difficult to pursue big, awesome things and not be totally enveloped in yourself. So I do want to go to those places, but I'm also looking to find those nuggets of wisdom of how I do that with wisdom. So that's why I was there. Okay. Sorry. I, uh, listen, you get it wrong. You get it wrong again, young lady, and you'll have I a know. nickname you may not like. But you did write a book about five lies that will ruin your real estate career. And we've been working our way through it. And we're on the fourth lie this week. The way she said that was like, we've been laboring our way through this. <laughs> Sorry. It's been really riveting. Slog. Our book club, um, <laughs> five lies. Yeah, the neighborhood moms are riveting. And we're it. on the fourth lie. The bigger the split, the better the broker. Yeah. So this is a book written to real estate agents by me, a real estate broker and agent, but this is relevant to everyone listening. We, we do have a lot of real estate agents who listen to the show. Thanks for being there. From a time to time when I attack our industry, I'm probably not talking about you unless you are the problem with our industry, which means you're believing these lies. Like I'm going to go to a broker that gives me a hundred percent of the split and I'm going to pay a small fee because I'm smarter than everybody. And a hundred percent is better than 90 or 80 or 70 or 50. Well, that's like math that, you know, my seven year old has been able to do for quite a while, but the world is not that simple. The relationship between an agent and a broker, and this is relevant to everyone listening. If you will ever buy or sell a house or rent a house or use a real estate agent or broker, this is important for you to understand how this actually works. Many, many, many agents are terrible at their job, period, end of statement. The majority of the residential real estate industry are bad and you should not use them. Again, if you're an agent and that offends you, one of two things is happening. One, you know I'm right because you're not full-time and committed and you're not excellent. Number two, if you are full-time and committed and excellent, I'm not talking to you. I'm not angry with you. I'm not angry with any of these people, but I think what we do is very important and has massive impact in people's lives and we should take it seriously. So if you don't like one of my labels there, just know if you are busting it to be excellent and deliver world-class value, I'm for you. I'm that You're not who I'm talking about. If you're doing this part-time and you're winging it because you want to make some easy money, you're the problem and people deserve better, period. And we can argue all you want. But my email is Courtney at, <laughs> um, here's the deal. If you're just out to get the biggest split, which means I want the biggest chunk of the commission from my broker, you're not going to find a great broker, probably. I'm not saying that there are not exceptions, but that broker is not going to spend a lot of time, energy, and money investing in you being great at your job with a lot of oversight, with education, with marketing, and any care and concern for your client whatsoever. They're never going to know any of your client's names unless someone sues them. That's how that model works. I'm not saying it's wrong legally, I'm saying it's a bad model to deliver world-class value to the client. I'm also saying it's a bad model for the agent unless you as an agent, instead of paying that split to the broker, you're then investing that same money in coaching and education and technology and systems and staff and resources and all those things. There, there is way more than one way to do this, but the point of the book is 
all professional, all business transactions are an exchange of value. I give you $6, I want the hamburger more than my $6. I think it's a fair exchange of value. I give you $100,000, you're an executive at the company, I want you to do your job more than I want my 100,000. You want the 100,000 more than you want to sit at home and not get it, you know, or work someplace else or whatever. The deal with a broker and an agent is really muddy because our industry is jacked up. And you have brokers that want like 500 agents and they just want to make a little bit of money off every agent every year and 300 of them are going to leave and we'll recruit 300 more and we'll hope we can keep 500, right? Uh, and those are exaggerated numbers. But the point is, you might be an agent and you get 10% and your broker gets 90% and that might be the best deal you ever saw in your life because the broker does so much for you and you can make all the money you want to make and be home with your family and travel and have insurance or whatever. You might be getting 100% and the broker only gets a monthly fee and that's still not a good enough deal because they're not even providing enough value for the fee. So the, the splits are very misleading. So the chapter says the bigger the broker, the bigger the split, the better the broker is a lie you need to go find the right broker and the right agent and the right exchange of value. And it could be 100, 0, 50, 50, 90, 10, 10, 90. None of that matters. What matters is what do I get? What do they get? What do we do for each other? Are we in cooperation at the right number? And most of the best agents in the world have way lower splits than you think. They're generating they're giving what, you, what people would say give. Their broker's getting a bigger split than they think because the broker's providing systems, technology, staff, leads, you know, insurance, technology, backup, business planning, vision, accountability, all the things that are essential to delivering world-class value to the client, and that's what we've got to do. Real quick, we just talked about insurance a little bit. DP Lambert's go-to guy. How much do we like DP? Oh, we love DP. And how easy he, is it to communicate with so DP? So easy, and he's so helpful. Yeah, legitimately really, really, really great. You can reach out to DP Lambert at Goosehead Insurance, dp.lambert at goosehead.com, dp.lambert at goosehead.com. If you're buying a home, you need a home warranty. If you're not buying a home, you might still want a home warranty, and we really, really like Christine Crowley. Um, they've recently been acquired, so we're getting some updated information, but you can still go to homeserve.com right now. Homeserve home warranties at homeserve.com. If you're thinking about buying, selling, or you're simply wanting to enjoy your home more, I want you to know what it's worth. I actually believe it's irresponsible in the current economy, in the current real estate market, in the current financial system to not know the general value of your home and check it at least every 30 to 90 days. You can do that in under one minute right now by going to toddtramoneyteam.com and clicking the home valuation button. In under a minute, you'll know what your home is worth, the trending number for your home equity, and if you really want, you can get a cash offer on your house at the click of a button. All that happens online, just like my son says, at toddtramoneyteam.com.